this is praying time. I don't know if y'all know it or not. It really is praying time. And, uh, you know, as, as one of the writers says, it says life is but a vapor. And you don't know how long we're going to be here. Amen. We need to love each other while we got the chance. We need to, we need to tell people we love them while we got the chance. And, amen. And be about that. Amen. There's no time to be, you know, distant and no time to be, you know, always argumentative with people. It's time to love people because we don't know uh, how long that we have with each other. Amen. So make sure you tell people you love them. Make sure you tell your family that you love them. Amen. As much as you, not just, some people say once a day. I say as much as you can in a day. Amen. You ought to let people know that you love them. All right. Amen. We thank God for this day. Amen. Thank God for our ladies, the ladies choir and all. Amen. Thank God for them. My wife keeps telling me this is not ladies day, women's day. She keeps telling me that. So I guess it's women in hat day. Okay. Something. It's got to be something. Amen. But thank God for first lady. Amen. The, amen. The, uh, Amen. And just thank God for all of you, Lord's people. Would you just slip your hand up in the air and just give the Lord some worship if you can? Just just honor him. Just magnify him. Just something from you. Yes. 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 Just something for him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 Would you help me to call that simple name? Come on. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, say it again. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. When we're sick, we can say this. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. Come on, what's his name? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, declare him as a healer. Come on. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. His name is Jesus. G. I feel healing in this place. Come on, let's say it again. Come on. Healer, healer. Healer, healer. Mm -hmm. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. We call the name Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I speak healing in this place. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now one more time, let's just call the name Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, clap your hands and praise the name Jesus today. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. To the word of the Lord today, Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 30, 32 through 35. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 through 35. 
5, reading out the New Living Translation of the Word of the Lord on today. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32 through 35. New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Praise his name. The Word of God reads, think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten, and sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail, and when you owned and, and all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there would be better things waiting for you <laughs> that would last forever. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Everybody say amen. Same verse, verse number 35. Same verse, verse number 35 out of the Amplified Bible says, Do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence, for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. Do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence, for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. Everybody say amen again. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his word to, on today. Today I, I will probably be giving you my final thoughts, my final notes on our series that I've been preaching from um, this entire month, which is simply entitled Fearless. Fearless. I've been telling you for a week now how that God wants us to be a fearless people. He wants us to be a fearless people. He wants us to be bold. He wants us to be brave. He wants us to be intrepid. The Bible is full of admonitions for us to be bold and to fear not and to fear not. In the New Testament, uh, it's, we are simply told that God has not given us the spirit of fear. We don't even, we don't even have that. We don't even have that. And if we don't have it, then, then we don't operate by it because, you know, I can't operate in something that I don't have. And so because I don't have the spirit of fear, I cannot operate in fear because I don't have it. I just don't, I just don't have it. You know, if you, if you go to the store and you don't have no money, you can't do anything because you just don't have no money. Okay. And so in the same sense, God says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but what I've given you, he says, I've given you power. So I got power. Then he says, I've given you a sound mind. So I do have a sound mind. I'm not, I'm not cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Power love and a sound mind and so that we have those things because God that's what God has given us and so therefore we are not a fearful people and we've been talking about that in order for us to accomplish anything for God we are going to be required to be a fearless people if we're going to accomplish anything for God we're going to need to be a fearless people and so therefore God has given us all that we need to be fearless people to walk in his promises, to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish, to do what God wants us to do, to, to, to uh, win against the attacks of the enemy. God has given us everything that we need. We have all the boldness that we need in order for us to defeat the devil. And so we are fearless people. And so today, today I want to talk, as I read out of, the, out of the Amplified Bible, how it says that he just says that we doesn't, he doesn't want us to fling away our fear fearless confidence so today I wanted to talk about fearless confidence fearless confidence we ought to have a fearless confidence okay not just a confidence but a fearless confidence a fearless confidence doesn't change when the circumstances change it's still a confidence. Fearless confidence doesn't back down. It doesn't retreat. It doesn't back up. A fearless confidence says, you know what? I'm going to win. I don't care what's happening. Okay, because my confidence is it's fearless that I'm I, I'm going to make it through this. I'm going to I'm going to beat this. I'm going to overcome this. I'm I, I have a fearless confidence. I was watching the other day. I was watching the other day. I, I think I, I guess I don't I don't know why this has been on. I guess is the the anniversary of of uh, when Magic Johnson uh, was uh, um, um, diagnosed to have the HIV virus. He was diagnosed to have, and some of you old enough may remember who Magic Johnson is. I know some of you are going to Magic Johnson. Well, he's a basketball player. And, uh, and uh, Magic Johnson, went, at, at the height of his career, they discovered that he had the HIV virus. And, and one of the things that I, I watched, it, they had many stories on it. I don't know, I guess it's the anniversary or something, but, but they had many stories about it. And one of the things that I saw him say when he was standing up at the podium, he said, he said, y'all, don't worry about me because I'm going to beat this. 
this. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat it. And he, he kept letting people know that he was going to beat it. Well, here we are. I don't know how many years later, I guess 20 some years later, he's still here. And matter of fact, he got more weight on him than you got on you because, and, and, but, but what I'm saying is, is that going into the situation, his mind was already made up that I'm going to approach this in a way that I'm going to have fearless confidence. I, I know what's happening to everybody else, but I'm just going to believe that what happens to everybody else is not going to happen to me fearless confidence you we must have that well that we're not going back down that we're not going back up but we're going to believe God as I was thinking about fearless confidence I I thought about what goes on in the book of Daniel on a couple of occasions in the book of Daniel and I just wanted to look at it real quickly uh first of all let's go to Daniel chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 I just, I just want to talk about uh, uh, uh some of this how you can see people in the Bible who had a fearless confidence in God because they knew who God was they knew that they were serving God and 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 by the way uh when you you know you're serving God you can always have a fearless confidence that God is gonna bless your life your problem is, is when you're doing all that mess okay when you no, no seriously when you do all that sin and when you do all that stuff and you outside of the will of God and you ain't you ain't living like you should then I understand why you don't have any confidence in God but if you're living for God if you're living for God you, you, you you're doing yourself a disservice to think that you should not have a confidence that God's gonna do something for you now when I'm out, when I'm out the will of God yeah I'm afraid I'm very afraid but when I'm in the will of God I know God's got my back he's gonna take care of me and all this other kind of stuff and so we got to have that fearless confidence so he, here in Daniel chapter 3 that's where I said I was going down chapter 3 this is uh what's those guys name Shadrach Meshach and Abednego they're they, they're here and they know they're serving God and they know that they're serving God there's been a decree that has been put out that says you know um, you got to bow down and you got to worship other things and they make up their mind you know what we're not going to do that we're not going to do that and let me tell you something when you have a fearless confidence in God you do not have to bow to the dictates or the culture of the world you just make up your mind you know I'm just, I'm just not going to do that I'm, I'm sorry I live for God for God I live for God I die come on now okay I live for God and so their minds were made up that they that they were going to live for God they were not going to worship any idol gods they were not going to worship any fads they were not going to worship any new things that were coming along because they understood that all this new stuff that come along is not necessarily God and so the, the, the penalty, of course, the penalty, if, if you were not, if you were not going to bow down, that you were going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. Come on now, y'all remember this for Sunday school. You're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. So I love their confidence that we see here in Daniel 3 and 17 as they face the fiery furnace, okay? Verse number 17, again, New Living Translation, it says this. this what, here they go, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, bad boys. They here, here they go. They say, if we are thrown, if we are thrown, if you, you go ahead, go ahead. If we are thrown into the blazing fire, the God whom we serve is able to save us. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if we're thrown into the fire, in fiery furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. <laughs> I'm going to keep it polite now. I'm going to keep it polite. Gonna, he's going to rescue us. But, but verse number 18 says, but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you we can put down our hats. No, but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the golden statue you have set up. <laughs> Y'all know what that is right there. That, that just fearless confidence. That, that, that says that, you know, they get ready. They're facing this fiery furnace and they're going, you know what? Y'all go, if if we get thrown in, which means that, you know, God is so in control that, you know, we don't have to get thrown in. God could, God could switch this situation around at any time because he's God. That's the type of confidence that we have in God. But if we, if we get thrown in, I got you, I need you to understand some things about our God. Number one, God is able to save us and he will rescue us. See, fearless, fearless confidence always uses the words able and will able and will I can tell people who operate in fearless confidence they're always saying able and they're always saying will they're always saying he's able and they're always saying he will whatever I'm facing he's able and he will whatever is going on he is able and he will whatever is happening he is able and he will fearless people who have fe a fearless confidence in God they're always using their word they're not talking about what's not going to happen they're talking about what's going to happen because they believe that God 
God is able and that he will. He is able and he will. So I want that to become a part of your vocabulary. I want that to become a part of your talk, a part of your speech. If you're going to operate in fearless confidence, you always got to tell people God is able and he will. So look at somebody around you. I don't care where they are. You left, right, front, back, whatever. They are. Just look at them and say, he's able and he will. So you got to believe that because that's a part of our fearless confidence. Whatever I am facing, he is able and he will. God is able to do just what he said he will do. He's going to perform every promise he gave to you. <laughs> Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. And you got to know that. And you got to trust that. And those are the type of things that keep us going. They keep us going because I have a fearless confidence in God that he is able. So if I got to if I got to go through this, I, I'll go through this because he's able to keep me and he will deliver me. OK. All right. And so I just wanted to mention that. And so so that's one of the things that I, I like to talk about when you when you talk about that fearless trust. There's another dude in Daniel. There's another dude. in Daniel. You all know this dude. This dude named Daniel. <laughs> Another dude in Daniel, his name is Daniel. Okay, in Daniel chapter 6, let's go to Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, we know this story, Daniel chapter 6. I'm just trying to re um, um, rehearse what y'all remember from Sunday school. Um, Daniel chapter 6 deals with um, the, Daniel has some haters in his life, as all of us do. Daniel has some haters in his life. He is so blessed. He's so, he's so moved. He, he's being, his life is so set up and being used by God that, that he has favor with the king. Because anytime you, 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 you're being blessed by God, people who are of esteem will favor you because they like what's on your life. Okay, anyway, so Daniel has this favor with the king, and, and the, other, the other people that are part of the court, they don't like this. Dan, why Daniel got all this favor? Why, why, why he the one when the king got a problem? The king go talk to him and don't talk to us. Well, that's because God's given Daniel some wisdom that's beyond the wisdom of the world. And sometimes you just got to recognize what God has given to you and not apologize that God has given you something that other folk don't like. Anybody listening to me at all? And when God's giving you something, people will go around other people just to talk to you when they're supposed to be talking to somebody else. But you got to watch when that happens because you will get on their list. So Daniel was on their list. So Daniel was on their list. And so all these other, all these other little chumps, they run to the king. They go to the king. They say to the king, hey, king, um, you know, I think you ought to make a decree. And the decree ought to be that, you know, that, you know, I, I, for 30 days, for 30 days, nobody should pray to anybody but you. And, you know, they was, they was trying to get to his little ego, thinking that, you know, this was going to get to Daniel because Daniel was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. He would pray three times a day. I, I like that about Daniel. Three times a day, Daniel would just go and pray. He didn't care about who was looking at him, all that kind of stuff, because he had a fearless confidence in the God that he was praying to. So Daniel would go and pray. And so what they did is that they made this decree. And now here's where we pick it up in Daniel chapter 6, because it, the, the decree said that if anybody prayed to any other person or any other God other than the king, then they would be thrown into the lion's den. They would be thrown into the lion's den. Um, by the way, it's amazing to me uh, that they can declare what they're going to do to you, but they cannot declare what will happen to you. You just now missed what I said. I mean, maybe you didn't get it. Maybe you didn't get it. Maybe you don't know the story. See, they can, they can, they can make up their mind, you know, hey, hey, this is, but they can't declare how the outcome is going to be. Yeah, you might throw me into the lions then, but you don't control the lions. You can only do what's in your control. You can't do what's in God's control. So anyway, so anyway, so anyway, so I'm trying to get to the scripture here. I feel mighty good in my sanctified bones. Okay, so in Daniel chapter 6, verse number 10, Daniel chapter 6, verse number 10, I want you to see this fearless confidence, this fearless confidence that Daniel has. It says, but when Daniel learned, but when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and got into a corner and began to be fearful. No, that's not what y'all said. Okay, but when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with his windows open <laughs> toward Jerusalem, and he prayed three times a day just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. And he is right there. Daniel, man, Daniel had this fearless, this fearless confidence in God. Daniel, and the whole thing that amazed me about the story is that Daniel, 
he, when he heard, when he learned, it says in the King James, uh, New Living Translation, and when he learned that the decree had been signed, because he knew what the decree was about, he went up into his upper place, it was up place, opened up the window, and started praying to God. Now, you have to forgive me. Uh, I believe that Daniel was Pentecostal. I can't prove it. I can't prove it. I can't prove it. And I know this before Pentecost of Acts chapter, one, Acts chapter 2. I understand. But I believe it was Pentecostal. I believe that Daniel opened up those windows and started, hey, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Do it for me one more time, God. Show yourself strong and mighty. Do it for me right now. Hey, glory. Because you know that's how Pentecostals pray. I mean, they all loud. You know, they got to really get it out. Okay. And so I, I believe Daniel was like that because Daniel wanted them to know that I got to feel his confidence in my God. I don't care what the decree is. I would rather fight than switch. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going to bow down to no, no emperor because the emperor is not God. Only God is God. Is anybody here listening to me at all? And so, and so y'all, by, by the way, by the way, if you're going to have this fearless confidence in God, it does not mean that you won't go through something. Because y'all got to know the rest of the story that Daniel had to go into the lion's den. But God controlled the lions. So look at somebody and tell them God is in control of your lions. That's a good thing to know. You got to understand that because... Because I know you got some stuff roaring at you, but God is in control of your lions. I know you got some things that look like they're about to devour you, but God is in control of your lions. So get in the midst of the fear. Uh, 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 get in the midst of the lions then and give, and give your God a praise because God is in control of the lions. Boy, I feel like preaching just a little while here this morning. God is in control of your lions. Somebody ought to lift up your hands and give your God a praise right there. But you got to have a fearless confidence that God is in control of your lions. You got to tell people before you even go into what you're going to, I'll see you tomorrow because I'm coming out of this. Because I know what the Bible says. The Bible says that weeping may endure for a night. Y'all about to make me preach in here. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy does come in the morning. So keep your eye on the door because I'm coming out of this in the morning. Have you ever read the story? Y'all be seated. Have you ever read the story? The Bible says that the only person that lost sleep in the story is the king. Because he was up all night worrying about whether or not Daniel was going to get out of this situation. But because of his fearless confidence, Daniel... Uh, glory. Woo, bless his name. Was not worried about a thing. Y'all don't mind if I get secular just for a moment. Can I get secular just for a moment? I know this don't make sense in the church, but I just feel like telling you, don't you worry about a thing. Because when God is on your side, everything will work out in your favor. Look at somebody and tell them, don't you worry about a thing. be seated thank you very much so the bible says that when daniel learned about it he did what he usually did because he was not going to let the devil take away from him what he knew worked for him and you got to understand what the devil is really after he's after the stuff that he knows works for you oh what time is it he's after he's trying to take away the stuff that works for you your praise worked for you in your past and it brought you out of some stuff. And the devil is trying to take away your confidence in your praise. Your prayer life worked in your past and it was able to bring you out of that stuff that you were going through. And the devil is trying to take away your prayer life. Baby, all I'm trying to do is get you to wake up and realize, wait a cotton picking minute here. The devil is after the stuff that works in my life. I need to, I need to get back to my usual. Look at somebody tell them, get back to your usual. Now be seated. Now be seated. Now I understand that what I just now said doesn't go well with the church. Because the church always wants to get to the unusual stuff. We need to do something different. Well, in some aspects of things, maybe we do. But there are some things that we know works. And you have to forgive me. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
prayer works praise works worship works glorifying God works I wish I had seven people in here that knew it works it worked in my past it's gonna work in my present and it's gonna work in my future so I'm not gonna let the devil shut me up I'm gonna keep praising my God I will bless the Lord oh my soul and all that's within me I'll bless his holy name talk to yourself real quickly and say I need to do what works so um so so, so Daniel Daniel had a fearless confidence that if I pray, my God will take care of me. I ain't going to change anything. I, if I do what I know to do, God's going to take care of me. If I keep praying like I've been praying, God's going to take care of me. If I keep praising like I've been praising, God's going to take care of me. If I keep coming to church like I've been coming to church, God's going to take care of me. When my enemies and my foes come to eat of my flesh, they gonna stumble right down at my feet because God's gonna take care of me. Sometimes you just gotta make up your mind. You gotta make up your mind. I'm gonna keep doing what I know works. All right, let me finish this. Let me finish this. We got some stuff we need to do. Let me finish this. Thank you. So, 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 so when we get to the book of Hebrews, the scripture that I read, the Hebrews Christians, the Hebrews here, the author of the Hebrews to the author, the author to the Hebrews realized didn't realize that the book that he was writing would become a part of the Bible, uh, but he wrote this to this particular group because he wanted to encourage them because he understood their situation. The Hebrew Christians had first become born again, and they were a very confident group. They were a very confident group. They were bold. They were bold because they trusted in God. But now some things that were going on that I'll talk about a little later if I get got time that were try, that was trying to drain their faith. Things were happening in their life that was trying to drain their faith. The devil can't take your faith unless he first takes your confidence. Did you hear what I just now said? The devil can't take your faith unless he first takes your confidence. Many times people try to walk by faith, but they just don't have enough confidence to back up what they say. They don't have enough confidence to believe what they say. So confidence is many times the missing substance of faith, meaning that without it, faith won't be able to operate properly. When we don't have the confidence that we ought to have, then our faith won't operate properly. That's why we got to have this fearless faith because if I don't have confidence, all the stuff that I'm saying is just empty because I'm really not believing what I'm saying. Creflo Dollar, Creflo Dollar says that, that, that faith, that faith is the law of God's kingdom. He says that so Christians, so as Christians, we cannot get anything to work if we don't have faith. But then Creflo says, but confidence is like the match that ignites the fuse. We need that confidence in order to ignite the match, to get the fire burning that we can believe God for some things. Because, come on, let's be honest. If we don't have confidence, yeah, we try our best to believe. We try our best to say God will. But sometimes our confidence is not there. And because our confidence is not there, we're, we're robbed of, of, of our joy. And we're robbed of being able to say that, you know what, I trust God completely. So faith is a practical expression of our confidence in God, a practical expression of our confidence in God. When we are confident that God will, will do what he said, we, we, we will become bolder. When I'm, when I'm confident that God is going to do something, I become very bold in what I do and what I say. When I'm confident, you can't get me to shut up. When I'm confident, you can't get me to sit down. When I'm confident, you can't, you can't get me to back up because I'm confident about it. Come on now. That, that's what confident does. I'm confident about this thing. So I speak it. I believe it. I trust that it's going to come to pass. We got to get this fearless confidence like, like this in God that we get so confident in God that you know what? I know this is coming to pass. I, I don't have to hesitate. I don't, have to, I don't have to back up in any way. 
So faith is a practical expression of our confidence in God. When we're confident, we, 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 begin, we become more bolder. When it comes to stepping out on faith, when God tells us to do something, we do it because we have that confidence that God is with us. So the writer of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews talks to, these, to, 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 to them and he gives them two strong reasons to continue in their fearless confidence. He gives them two strong reasons for their strong allegiance to Christ, to keep that strong allegiance to Christ. I'll give them to you very quickly because I got to go. It's number one, the first strong reason that he gives them is that their former experiences should stimulate them. Their former experience should stimulate them. The first reason they should have a fearless confidence and keep that is because their former experiences should stimulate them. Okay, listen to this. After they became believers, after they became believers, they, they became targets. Listen to me. When you get saved, you become a target. When you say yes, you become a target. When you start to move in a new level of ministry, you become a target. When you make up your mind, you're going to start doing something for God, you become a target. And maybe nobody ever told you that. Okay, but I need to tell you that. They became a target. And what happened to these Hebrews, these Hebrews is that their families disowned them, their friends forsook them, and their foes attacked them. I call that the trifecta right there. Okay? When your family act crazy and your friends act crazy and your foes act crazy, you really got something going on. But instead of them producing fear, they become strengthened. Because the Bible says, the writer of Hebrews says, they remain faithful. Boy, I feel like taking a moment right now. I just feel like taking a moment. I feel, I feel praised. I know you're saying, well, why do you feel praised? Why do you feel praised? Because we that are in here today, you know why we're here? Because we remain faithful. Oh, please don't be fooled. Please don't be fooled. We're not here today because nothing happened. We're not here today because things didn't come at us. We're not here today because every day has been smooth. The reason why we're here today is because we remain faithful. Boy, I wish I, bro, you ought to stop acting like you don't know what I'm talking about and come on and testify with me. I'm so glad that I remain faithful. You ought to throw your hands up and take a moment and celebrate yourself. Yeah, I just felt like celebrating myself right there because the devil could have took me out, but thank God I remain faithful. It could have turned another way, but because I stood where I was supposed to stand and had a fearless confidence in God, it has turned to my favor. Somebody in here ought to praise your God because you remain faithful. Y'all be seated. Let me get out of this. There, there, by the way, if you continue to live for God, there will be times that the only thing you have to show for your relationship with God is faithfulness. I'm preaching better, y'all. Amen to me. There are going to be times in your relationship with God that the only thing you are going to have to show is your faithfulness. You ain't going to have the stuff. You ain't going to have the, this happening. You're going to have folk against you. You're going to have things happen against you. But the only thing you're going to have to show is your faithfulness. You're going to be able to stand up and say, yes, it has happened to me. Yes, it has went on. Yes, it has been appointed to me. But guess what? I ain't going nowhere. I'm still here. I still got my praise. I might not have my money. I might not have my family. I might not have my friends. My enemies acting crazy crazy, but I'm still here. I've survived the storm, and I feel like giving God a praise. <laughs> Look at somebody say, all I got is my faith. All I got is my faith. That's all I got. That's all I got is my faith. I can't let the devil take away that faith. That's all I got is my faith. My faith keeps me going. My confidence keeps me going. That's all I got. It's all I got. And you got to watch folk in the church because they will try to drain you of that, the very thing that's keeping you going. Please keep your mouth off of me. I'm doing everything I can to keep going. I'm doing everything I can to keep myself where I need to be. I'm doing everything I can. 
<laughs> okay, I got the, I got the, I got the move. I got the move. I got the move. And, and, and so therefore, he, he wants them to remember. He wants them to remember. This is what he's trying to do. Get them to remember that you had all these conditions, but you remain faithful. Because you remain faithful. You, well, I feel like preaching this to somebody. I'm running out of time, though. You went through all that, and you're still here. The devil thought he had you. <laughs> But you got away. <laughs> oh, I'm preaching to the wrong crowd. I should have went over to Camp Brown Methodist Church and preached this message this morning. The devil thought he had you. He had you in some stuff. He had you locked up in some stuff. People had some information on you. All kind of craziness was going on. But look at you. You are still here. You are still here. Though he has tried you, you have come out as pure gold. You ought to rejoice that you you are still. Woo! Look over at somebody and tell them, take a look at me now. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Lord have mercy. Forgive me, forgive me. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know the hell that's been against me. So I know you're wondering why he won't move from that point. Because when I remember what God did for me and how he kept me, boy, it make me feel like praising and magnifying my God. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to move. Got to move. Be seated. I'm sorry. I got to move. But I just hear in my spirit two words. Same God. What, 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 what them two words mean? Same God, same God that brought you through your last episode. Same God that brought you through three years ago. Same God that brought you through what they were saying. Same God that brought you through that storm. It's the same God that's with you right now. And you can have a confidence that that God, that God who promises in his word that I will keep you from falling, that same So just look over at somebody and say, I'm same God. I'm sorry, y'all be seated. God, I feel like preaching for some reason this morning. I don't know what's going on. Same God. Be seated. Be seated. God bless you. Be seated. Same God. Fiery furnace. Same God. Lions den. Same God. Goliath. Same God. Will y'all let me preach the message? Be the same God that delivered them is the same God that delivers us. Same God. <laughs> Woo. Boy, that makes me excited right there. Excuse me, y'all be seated. Make me excited. Make, 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 make. God, Joe, that makes me excited right there. Same God. Let there be light. Same God. That, 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 that. Cross on dry land through the Red Sea. Same God. You don't serve a different God. You serve the same God that did all that. So don't cast away your confidence because if he did that for them, he will do that for you. Same God. So the second reason, the second reason, who preaching at 11? The, the second reason. Did y'all say same pastor? <laughs> that was good. I like that one. So he wants them to have fearless confidence because number one, oh, yes. <laughs> Jesus.
same God. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Somebody just needed to hear that. I'm trying to get to my next point, but somebody just needs to hear it. If he did it before, he'll do it again. I wonder if there's anybody at the point where you need God to do it again. God, I just need you to do it again. I need you to make a way again. I need you to open a door again. I need you to heal again. I need you to deliver again. I need to see a breakthrough again. I need to see your power again. I need to see it again. Is there anybody here that needs to see it again? I got the clothes. Y'all don't messed up the entire message. But I need to see it again. Mama, mama, say, say, not mama, sir. Boy, I'm preaching to myself right now. Some of y'all don't need to see something, but I need to see something. I heard God did something for somebody. I need to see it for me now. Is there anybody need to see it for yourself? God, forgive me. I need to see you do this for me. So I'm giving you the next point, but I'm not going to preach it so you can at least have it. So t take your seat. Take your seat before we turn this into the Refreshing and Renewal Conference. <laughs> the second reason that he tells them that you ought to have a fearless confidence is because of this. The nearness of the reward 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 he tells them don't cast away hallelujah your confidence god i'm trying not to say anything here don't cast away your don't throw away your confidence ah nah. because remember the great reward it brings you. In other words, it's not time to give up. Your reward is right around the corner. It's no time to turn back. You're right on the verge of re your reward for everything that you've been through. Because God is about to put a Job reward on your life. You understand that, don't you? Maybe you don't understand that God's about to put a Job reward on your life. Yeah, if I was an evangelist, one of them really sanctified preachers, I would explain it this way. You're about to get double for your trouble. I got a fearless confidence that I'm gonna get about to get paid back with interest. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Clap your hands. Give God praise. Hallelujah. I'm, I got two more pages of notes. I don't have time to get to them. I'm done. I'm done. So stand up with me. We need to have a fearless confidence. Fearless confidence. Fearless confidence. Look at somebody and say, he is able. He will. That's, that's your fearless confidence. God's going to do for you what he said he's going to do for you. So, Father, I thank you now for the words that I've been able to share with your people. And, Father, I pray for all of us because we're on the verge of a reward. All that we've been through is, is about to be worth it. Ha, ha. Woo. Glory. It is about to be worth it because we are about to be rewarded for all that we had to deal with. And I thank you that we are still here. We're still here. After all that we've been through, we're still here. And that lets us know that we're going to get to where you want us to get to. So God... For these next 20 seconds, we just want to praise you for our promise that's about to come to pass. Come on, give them some praise right there. Come on. 
Come on, give them some praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we bless you and we honor you and we glorify you. We magnify you. You are so great and greatly to be praised. Thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. One more time, clap your hands and praise him. Be seated just for one moment. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Rodney, we doing something this morning, right? Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't mistaken, okay, because uh, I had to close in time for us to recognize one of our uh, brothers that's going to be departing the, this area. He's been a great part of this church and part of this ministry. We're going to miss him. I don't know who's the care pastor. Okay, care pastor, uh, council. Come on, sir, and 